Welcome and aloha. My name is Mark Schlav. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Today we're staying in Honolulu and talking with Loretta Sheehan. Loretta Sheehan is presently an attorney in private practice at the law firm of Davis Levin Livingston. She's also a member of the Honolulu Police Commission. That's where her, quote, style, end quote, has made the news. Ms. Sheehan previously served as a U.S. Attorney for the District of Hawaii, prosecuting criminal cases. She has described her style as, quote, very direct, upfront, and somewhat confrontational, which she attributes to her time as a prosecutor. Well, we'll get into that uh, in a minute. Welcome, Ms. Sheehan. How are Thank you? Thank you. May I call I'm you very May I Please do. Please. Okay. All right. Okay, Loretta. Now, be, before we uh, talk about recent news uh, of the Honolulu Police Commission and your involvement there, before we dive into that, please tell me uh, a little bit about your professional background, how you got to Hawaii, and what type of work you do now as a lawyer. Okay. Um, let me start by saying that any views or opinions I express today are mine and not nece necessarily that of the Police Commission. Got it. Um, but as to me, I grew up in New York. I went to Georgetown Law School and met a guy who was from Hawaii, uh, Mark Mat Matsunaga. We got married, moved uh, back to Hawaii. I joined the prosecutor's office under Chuck Marsland and uh, worked there for 10 years. And then I went over to the U.S. Attorney's Office and became an assistant U.S. Attorney under Steve Alm. I worked there for 14 years doing mostly um, drug crime, uh, violent crime on bases, um, an assortment of things. And then, uh, and then about 11 years ago, I came over and started working in the civil world for Davis Logan Livingston. Wow. So you've done all types of cases, uh, criminal, mm -hmm. civil, uh, the whole background, and it sounds like litigation was a lot of it. Uh, what motivates you as a lawyer? I mean, why, why, why did you, you know? Yeah, become a lawyer? Yeah, why did you become um, a lawyer? And, why, and do you, I mean, you obviously seem to uh, like it. So I do. Yeah. I love being a lawyer. <laughs> I love it. Um, I, I really, I love the idea that you can do something to make life more fair for people, right. that you can help people. Um, you know, once I, when I was in college, I once asked a guy who was, he was, um, he was in the law school and I said, why, what do you like about law school? Like, what, what do you, why are you doing it? And he said to me the most interesting thing that really stuck uh, with me to this day. He said, it, it's like, when I look at society, he says, it's like, because he had a background in music, he said, it's like, I, I, I see a, a big musical score, like a big orchestra, a big masterpiece, and, and we're all running around and creating this music, this sound. He says, but lawyers are the only ones who actually get to read the score. We get to actually read the notes and read the crescendos and decrescendos. He says, I love that part that we actually sort of get the code. We actually get to read it. And I thought, and that really stuck with me. I thought, yeah, that's kind of what we do. And that's how you can help people by, by knowing the rules and explaining the rules and then working within the rules. Is there uh, one particular case in your career? I mean, you've had a, a, a career over many years in different types of cases. Is there one case that sticks out or are there many, I guess, but is there one case that you could tell us about that uh, kind of uh, yeah, think... ma makes you proud to be a lawyer? <laughs> um, the one that comes to mind is uh, a case we litigated a couple of years ago, and it was 32 men who took on uh, Kamehameha schools for the, their sexual abuse when they had been high schoolers at the hands of Dr. Robert Brown, the school's uh, psychiatric advisor. It was really meaningful and uh, amazing to, to stand next to these men and watch them exercise such courage to face a trauma that had just about destroyed their lives and to take on huge, powerful uh, interest, institution in the state of Hawaii, uh, that is Bishop Estate, and to come out and to win uh, or to, to have a successful result and to have it acknowledged, most importantly, by the school that this happened um, and that 
these men had been hurt and that they were sorry. That was so meaningful to me. It was I. I was, it was such an honor to be with them throughout that litigation. Kind of gave you uh, a deep breath. I mean, to be a lawyer and something that. Uh, yeah, it's like proud. this yeah. is what, this is what we're supposed to do. This is what the practice is supposed to be like. It was yeah. it was beautiful. And and helping people and, and mm -hmm. uh, okay, got it. Um, now, you you've been in the news about being on the Honolulu Police Commission. So tell tell us a little bit. And, I, and with the understanding, though these are your opinions only. Um, sure. What? Well, for first, what is the Honolulu Police Commission all about? What? What is it? What does it do? And uh, what, what does it sure. oversee? It's it's one of the many boards and commissions that exist in the city and county of Honolulu. And what we do is we're a volunteer board, seven people. We're all appointed by the mayor uh, for five-year terms, and we our job is to uh, hire. Uh, fire and discipline the chief of police to review citizen complaints against police officers um, and to review the rules and regulations of the police department. So that's what we're mandated to do. Okay. And uh, you say you were appointed by the mayor and you're right. volunteers. So uh, I guess, uh, you know, you don't get paid. No. Uh, so, well, well, how did it come about that uh, the mayor uh, selected you and appointed you to be on the Honolulu Police Commission? And uh, why uh, would you do something and not get paid? I mean, you know, <laughs> you're, 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 in, you're in the news and you're spending a lot of time. Uh, there's controversy. Of why, why do it? So, so how, how did you get appointed and why do it for, for nothing, for free? <laughs> Great question. Uh, well, I do it because I love my home. I love the people here in Honolulu, and um, and I have, uh, you know, and I, and I just really thought I could help. I have a background in law enforcement. I met with the mayor. Uh, he didn't know me uh, at all. And okay. what happened was, um, yeah, right. It, it's a, uh, it's kind of in the past been considered a political plum. You, you get elected and you put your friends on boards and you know, mm -hmm. but he didn't know me at all. Hmm. And so what happened was uh, Ray Soon, his then chief of staff, knew me, and they were looking for somebody. And Ray said, apparently, said to the mayor, well, how about this gal? She used to be over at the U.S. Attorney's Office, and she was a prosecutor, and she's a lawyer. And, um, and at the time, um, it was acknowledged that um, Chief Kaloha was under federal investigation. And so they, so Ray called me up and said, do you want to meet with the mayor? Do you want to, would you? Would you be, consider being on the board and or on the commission? So I said sure, and I met with the mayor and I told him exactly what I thought, and he said, "Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead, do it." <laughs> so, uh, so then I got sworn in, and that's how I joined the commission. Okay, and you, and I, it was interesting. You said you told him exactly what you thought. Well, okay, <laughs> uh, it's been said that your quote style is outspoken. Uh, you raise issues that other colleagues uh, prefer not. To raise or ignore, and yeah. that you're somewhat confrontational and uh, someone who speaks truth to power. Now, th those are all quotes that I've read in the newspaper uh, about you. Uh, are they true? Are they correct? And I mean, is that your style? What is your style? <laughs> you know, I, I, uh, I guess I, I always knew I was somewhat direct. I mean, I, I know I'm a litigator. I really strive for clarity. Um, I was surprised to find that I was so far outside the box when it came to social norms. I, I and I'm still kind of surprised because to me it was it's perfectly natural, it's perfectly normal to see something and say, "Hey, wait a minute, what? Like what? Like what? You know?" Um, but apparently, a lot of people don't do that or are uncomfortable doing that, and. Um, so it's it's been a learning curve for me as well. I thought I was I really thought I was pretty normal huh? <laughs> for the police commission, <laughs> and uh, I guess I learned uh, I'm not. <laughs> okay, so so um, your style being outside the box a little bit, uh, and you and that's you think that comes from being a prosecutor maybe, and just being in yeah. a, someone who goes and argues their case in front of a judge and has to. Uh, maybe yeah, um, I mean, not uh, conform to what everybody else is saying. 
Well, that's that's the practice of law, right? Is that yeah, someone yeah, takes a position, yeah. someone takes an alternative position, and so every single day someone tells me, "No, you're wrong," and I tell someone else, "No, you're wrong," and we do it with civility. And um, but it's but it's with the with the idea that we're going to get to an end result, we're going to get to justice for our clients, or as close to justice as we can come. So I think I'm just much more used to being very blunt and plain spoken. Um, there's just no point in mincing words or beating around the bush um, in my world. But I can appreciate that maybe there is more need for grace in other worlds. So. Okay. All right. And so you appreciate both sides and sometimes, uh, I guess, politics says uh, be act differently. But um, a lot of the, the uh, uh, comments about your quote style have been about the uh, uh, Ke Aloha retirement agreement and your comments about that. And you're, you were the sole person on the Honolulu Police Commission to vote against the right. uh, retirement agreement. And so, um, I mean, what what is your opinion about the uh, uh, Ke Aloha, uh, Ch Chief Police Ke Aloha's retirement agreement? Uh, what were your feelings about it uh, at, at the time? Uh, what, what, what were your thoughts? Right. Well, uh, at the time, I said what I meant. I, I thought it was unnecessary, expensive, and very likely undeserved. Um, and I still feel that way. It, it was completely unnecessary. We had a troubled police department. We had uh, the, the chief was under investigation. The chief had caused a mistrial. Uh, the, there were questions that could be asked. There was also, a, a separate and apart from the whole mailbox uh, trial issue um, and the possible framing of Gerard Kawana, there, I had deep concerns about recent lawsuits uh, that were resolved where there was police misconduct and where there were there didn't appear to be any consequences. Um, I was in particular appalled. I remember back in 2016 being really appalled at the treatment of two lesbian women who were on the North Shore in uh, a supermarket and they had kissed and and um, basically got arrested for being lesbian <laughs> and held in jail. And the officer who arrested them was allowed to retire in good standing. And there, there just didn't appear, no one blinked an eye. And I thought, am I crazy? This is the United States of America. We have like civil liberties here. Like, we, you know, and things like that. And then there were other police officers where it was, there was documented misconduct. There was, um, and, and I was really concerned about the, uh, the way the department was being administered. So my solution was, in light of all these concerns, was let's have, as is required by the charter, let's have a for cause hearing. Um, and that's a hearing where you afford everybody due process, you have a hearing, you tell the employee hey, here's what we're concerned about. Here's where we think that you you may have um, uh, not acted in the best interest of the department. You may have really whiffed on this one um, and to ask for answers and explanations. And if you don't receive them, then say, I'm sorry, this isn't, this isn't working out and the time has come to part ways. Now, the downside of a for cause hearing where you fire somebody is that there can be subsequent litigation. People often don't like being fired. So my solution was a little stickier, a little more uh, time and work intensive, but it was free and I thought it would be a good practice to go through it. Um, and the rest of the commission just simply wanted to pay a severance package and have him leave. Okay, well, we're gonna take a break and then I wanna go into a little more details about that severance package and okay. uh, your specific concerns about it. So we'll take a, okay. a short break and then we'll be right back and go into a little more detail, okay? All right, thank you. Hello, I'm Dave Stevens, host of the Cyber Underground. This is where we discuss everything that relates to computers that's just kind of scare you out of your mind. So come join us every week here on thinktechhawaii.com, 1 p.m on Friday afternoons, and then you can go see all our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Cyber Underground on YouTube. All our shows will show up, and please follow us 
We're always giving you current, relevant information to protect you, keeping you safe. Aloha. Aloha. I'm Keisha King, host of At the Crossroads, where we have conversations that are real and relevant. We have spoken with community leaders from right here locally in Hawaii and all around the world. Won't you join us on thinktechhawaii.com or on YouTube on the Think Tech Hawaii channel. Our conversations are real, relevant, and lots of fun. I'll see you at the crossroads. Aloha. Welcome back. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. And we are talking with Loretta Sheehan. And Loretta, you're, you're back. And I wanted you to talk a little bit uh, about, you know, you, you talked about the severance package and the retirement agreement uh, with uh, Chief of Police Kealoha. You, you know, you, you mentioned that you wanted to have a four cause hearing, uh, I guess, in order to, to get the facts out. Uh, but the rest of the uh, police commission, and I'm, I'm not trying to cause any friction here, but I mean, they, they felt a settlement package was, was the better way out of this. So what, what were your specific concerns uh, and, you know, uh, that, that, that you thought about and that you raised about the, about the severance package and the retirement agreement? And, and we have a right. shot of the retire the first page, at least, of the retirement agreement at some point. Yeah. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> um, you know, actually, I did not raise it at the time because it did not occur to me at the time. And Steve Levinson mentioned it to me after the fact. But one concern is that, you know, we might not have had the authority to enter into this retirement agreement at all because our powers are enumerated in the city charter. And the city charter says we can hire, we can fire, we can uh, you know, review citizen complaints, we can review rules and regulations. It does not say we can spend HPD money. It does not say that we can, uh, we can create severance packages. It, we, I'm not really sure why people thought we had the authority to do this. I think everybody assumed we had the authority to do this because we could fire the chief. But the thing is, this isn't firing. This is giving him a lot of money. And so I wish I thought of it at the time, but I did not. But that's one concern that I have retrospectively. Um, I think people could debate both sides of that issue. Um, but, um, and then when I, but at the time I did raise something. I didn't like the idea that we had a chief who was under federal investigation. He might actually be convicted of very serious felonies. So I didn't like the idea that we were just going to give him a bunch of money with this like clawback provision that if he ever eventually was, you know, the final, final, final appeal that came down, if it happened within six years, we would claw back the money. Well, at that point, he wouldn't have any money and we couldn't take it out of his pension under state law. So um, I was talking to my, my partner, Mark Davis, and he said, well, uh, about options in terms of when someone's going to be fired and how it can be done. And it, uh, he talked about the, which I thought would work well in this situation, about um, buying an annuity, that sometimes companies buy an annuity. Um, and so this is the way it would work. The city and county could buy an annuity. And when Chief Kealoha left, the, the annuity would start paying out um, to Chief Kealoha. But the moment that, that a verdict came down that he was guilty of anything, then the beneficiary would automatically revert to the city and county of Honolulu. And we would go through an appeal process. And if he lost every single one of those appeals, the city and county would just keep the money. But if, he, if his conviction was reversed, then we could have the beneficiary revert back to Chief Kealoha and we start all over again. And in that way, we're not chasing after money. There's an automatic reversion uh, part of the annuity. And I thought that was a great idea. And so I brought it to, uh, I brought it to the attention of uh, Donna Leong, our lawyer, and she didn't want to hear it. She, was, she wasn't having it. So, so your, your idea was, you know, pay him if, he, if he's clean. 
And if, if he's not, then the money comes back to the city. Basically, I, right. I may not be stating it exactly. As you and we don't, and it, it, the benefit of that is there's no lawsuits. There's just an automatic reversion. So if, like, for example, when he was, when the verdict came in and he was found guilty, like, bang, Sidney County would start getting the checks instead of Louis K. Loha. So I thought it was a great idea, but nobody, nobody else did. And, and yeah, it, and it sounds fair too. I mean, and I guess the question that comes up to, in everybody's mind is why pay him anything? I mean... Uh, why two hundred and fifty thousand dollars? How did that come about? Or do you I mean uh, how did the, fi where well, did the figure come from? Do you know? I can only guess it came. Uh, no, I, I I was not. I did not negotiate this deal. It was negotiated by Donald Leong and Max Sword. And I can only imagine that the number came from uh, Kevin Samita. I don't know though. Um, okay. You know, and the, but the reason that I heard on the other side, and the reason that Max said in his press conference that we entered this was because it was time to move on and the department was hurting and we needed to just put the past behind us. And that was, that was the rationale. Whose uh, money was uh, that, by the way? Who's, where, did the where did the $250,000 come right? from? Whose money was that? HPDs at the end. And that's another really strange thing because my understanding of the budget process is that they have line items. And so they, they have to tell the city council the year before, like, okay, we're going to spend $125,000 on guns or, you know, and they have to have a line item and they don't have any slush funds. And so, yeah, it begs the question, like, well, why? how come they suddenly had $250,000 lying around? Like, where did that come from? And I don't, but to this day, I really don't know. To tell you the truth. What, what uh, did with the? I mean, I, I guess I. So I hear you saying that the other commissioners felt that it's time to move on and you know let's get this off of our table and start fresh with a new police yeah. chief and uh, anyway. that was worth it, uh, I guess. And uh, what what did um, I mean? And that is that what we is that what the city got back is is a clean slate to start over? Is is that how it was? Uh, Said. Um, I, well, well, um, yeah, <laughs> we, got, we got a clean, yeah, he let, he went away, uh, he left the position and we then got to engage in a selection process and we got a new chief and we, we did that. It accelerated that uh, process. So, we, you know, that we did get that. So. And there was a lawsuit recently filed uh, against uh, Louis K. Aloha for right. an attempt to get the money back. Is there any, what, do, you have an, do you have an opinion, a personal opinion about whether there's much chance to get that those funds back? Uh, you know, I don't know how much time he's gonna do. Um, uh, so let's assume that he never works again. Um, so, yeah. Uh, it would be very, very difficult to get any money out of him. I understand that, like, we're kind of last in line. There's a lot of people he owes money to. So I I would not be that hopeful. If he does work, however, um, you know, uh, we could possibly put means against a new salary. Um, it's going to be hard to collect. Okay. So, all right. All right. And, and so you spoke out... Um, yeah, you, I, I, I can feel you have great respect for the other commissioners and uh, feel that, you know, they they had their own uh, opinion also. And you, you spoke out and, that, and that's how your, quote, style, end quote, got, got in. Um, mm -hmm. what, what have you learned from from this experience? What have um, from Bob well, for being on the police commission and from going through all of this? What have you, you know, personally and professionally learned? You know, I've really learned the importance of transparency. I mean, I, 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 I always kind of appreciated that, like, yeah, government should be transparent and then democracy, people need to know what's going on. And, and then when you actually are involved in it and you see people trying to keep things behind closed doors and trying to keep things secret and, uh, and there are closed doors meetings and there are things that are kept secret, uh, you know, I, I, this whole experience taught me that it is vital to have transparency in government, that um, people with power will behave a different way when they are exposed to public light. 
it, literally they will behave differently. Um, and while I, I always cognitively believe that before this experience, now it's like in here, like now I'm like, yeah, <laughs> that is for sure. So that, that, that was my own personal takeaway, uh, which is a little bit selfish. Um, that, that, that was, that's just speaking for myself. The, the, um, the other part that I really appreciated that I learned, which I just love, is I learned a lot about my community. I mean, I always cared for my home and for Honolulu, um, but I just, again, like the, the former students of Kamehameha schools, I saw tremendous courage out there and tremendous honesty and just a tremendous love for you know, the, the rule of law and, and for justice. I mean, that is... As a lawyer, when you learn that other people actually care about the right results and they care about justice, that is yeah. completely inspirational. And, you know? and what I hear you saying, too, is that um, you actually learned something you believed. <laughs> I mean, you had the experience <laughs> that kind of backed up uh, yeah. your, your, your internal feelings about certain issues. Yeah. And now you've it gone through it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then, yeah. and you're like, "Wow, no kidding." Like, <laughs> well, okay. And, no. and, I'm sorry. Do, do you do you intend to stay in public service like this? Is this something that I mean, uh, you know, is this something that you want to do? Are you? Uh, I mean, is this something that you feel is important for you? Yeah. Yeah. I I I love public service. Like I I always have, and that's why I love being a prosecutor. Um, not to say I don't love private practice, but that's why I was so willing to serve. Public service is kind of in my DNA. Um, so I'll continue to find ways to serve um, the community, uh, however, wherever I'm best, wherever I'm needed, really. Well, let me ask you a loaded question. All right. Is, I mean, do you have sure. any uh, aspirations to um, run for any office or anything like that? Is that something that... Uh, you would consider or want to do yeah. in the future? How do you feel about that? Well, um, you know, my ex-husband was in politics and uh, my former father-in-law was in politics. So I got to see the inside of the political world. And um, so I have great respect for people who are in politics. Uh, it's it's hard. It's hard life. And you... Uh, well, for some, there are some characters I don't have a whole lot of respect for, but I, I do for the vast majority of politicians. Um, so my answer is um, never say never, but I think that my strength is not necessarily working from the inside um, as, an, as part of the machine, if you will, that maybe that I've learned kind of maybe my I'm best suited on the outside. Um, asking why is that what are we doing <laughs> okay all right and and uh, with that we'll we'll conclude our program because you just answered the question of what your style is and uh, <laughs> talked, talked about that and uh, you know uh, we I, I I think I speak for a lot of people that say we appreciate your style it's good to have uh, somebody that talks truth to power so thank you for being my guest today uh, I appreciate uh, your service and uh, we'll look forward to uh, having you uh, uh, hearing about your style some more. Aloha. My next adventure. Thank you, Mark. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> okay.